Hi everybody. This is just a uh, quick how-to on a common request I get dealing with audio sound effects. What I'm going to cover right now is how to get an echo or a reverb effect to extend beyond the end of a sound effect, such as a phone ringing. These are commonly referred to as ringouts. And I've had a lot of people tell me that they don't think Premiere can do some sort of a ring out beyond the end of, of a clip. And that's actually not true. There is actually a way of doing this, but it involves the difference between clip uh, audio effects and track audio effects. So understanding how these two work uh, is going to help understand how to do this. And I'm actually going to walk you through the entire process here. So what I've done here in my timeline, I've actually thrown a, uh, a black video clip up. We're not really doing anything with video today, um, but, but I put that on the timeline just so I can extend it out beyond the end of whatever audio clip we happen to be working with. And I'm going to start with this first audio effect here uh, and just give this a listen. This is just a ringing effect. And what I want you to listen for is at the very end of the clip, notice that you know, the clip just kind of cuts. It's sort of a harsh ending to the file. I'll play that back one more time here so that you can hear that. So there's kind of that harsh ending here. And what we want to do is we want to add a reverb effect that's going to make this sound like it's in a room. It has some bounce off of the walls and things. And this is a common request that I hear from customers. And what they typically try doing is taking some sort of a reverb effect from the uh, audio effects folder here. Like I've got this studio reverb effect and they drag it and drop it onto the clip. Then you see the studio reverb effect show up here. And very quickly I can say edit and change this to like maybe a uh, a great hall reverb effect. That's going to make it sound like it's in this huge room here. It's really going to uh, exaggerate what most people want, but I think you'll get the idea here. So we'll go ahead and close that. And let's just listen to this one more time. So now you can hear that presence. You can hear that this sounds almost like, you know, a telephone ringing on a, uh, like on a pillar in the middle of some museum someplace. Um, but the problem is, is at the very end of the effect, let's play that one more time. It doesn't continue beyond the end of the effect. And that's because we place the effect in the wrong location. What we need to do to make this work properly is instead of putting it on the clip, we need to put it on the track. Premiere has this idea of effects that can live on both a clip or can live on a track. And if you put it onto a track, the effect will actually carry through beyond the hard end of the file, like what you see here. Um, right now, the audio effect is ending at the point of the, the out point of the clip. And that's, that's precisely what we don't want. We want it to uh, move beyond that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move to my audio track mixer and if you don't have this effect area in this gray space up here at the top of your track mixer, just know that there's a little tiny uh, twirl arrow here. If I zoom in, you can see that there's this little tiny twirl effect here that shows and hides the effect areas. And so what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to put this effect on audio one just so you can see that this is a track effect. Everything on track one is going to be affected by it. So it's not uncommon to create a track and then maybe label the track ring outs so that you know that this is the track. Normally I wouldn't put this on track one. And one other quick little tidbit that I always like to throw out to people is if you use a lot of minimized audio tracks like this and you want to see the name of the tracks, just know you can customize your track header. And I do this pretty regularly. I just take the A1 that's listed here in the track header and I drop it into this top row. And oftentimes I'll remove the microphone or I'll move the microphone down to a lower row just because, you know, it's in a weird way, it's kind of dangerous, right? In fact, you don't drag it from here. 
and I have trouble remembering that sometimes, you drag it always from the button editor down uh, to make changes here. So you can see that A1, uh, when I dragged it and dropped it down here, it actually put the track name. So it says ring outs. Now when I click OK, uh, the track height hasn't changed, but now I'm seeing the names of the tracks. So just a little bonus thing there that I'm just throwing out there. Okay, so what do we need to do now? I want to create this ring out track. And so what I'm going to do is up in the audio track mixer, I've named the track ring outs. I'm going to twirl down the little effects area here. And these are basically effect slots that we can put in for track effects. So you can stack a number of track effects in here. And what I'm going to do is click on just any of them. It doesn't matter which one you pick. Um, and I'm going to choose Reverb, Studio Reverb. And then I'm going to just double click on it to bring up the, uh, the same control panel here. And let's choose the exact same effect again, Great Hall. There's the preset that we're going to use. And now, again, with the sound effect in uh, A3, that's not going to have any impact. Let's go ahead and play it one more time just to remember. It just ends at the end. But watch the magic happen when I drag it just up to the ring outs track. you can hear that reverb continuing beyond the end of the file. I'll go ahead and play that back one more time here. So that reverb lasts for several seconds after the end of the file. And so by setting up a ring outs track as one of your dedicated tracks in your timeline, Anytime you're doing any type of sound design work in Premiere, if you need to have a, any type of sound effect that extends beyond the end of the clip, now you know how to do it. Thanks for watching.